Good morning. I'd like to start today with a prayer. The congregational prayer as it, you find it printed in the sermon I sent out. So let us pray. O God, the creator of all the earth and the giver of life and peace, help us to recognize your presence in all that we encounter in our lives. Give our hearts, give us hearts to please you and joy to be your people. Let us embrace in this era of social distance the love with which you call us together. Give us, Lord, enough faith to believe you will see us through these times of uncertainty and bring us once more into fellowship as your church. In the name of Jesus we ask, the same Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as we think about the time together that we have, um, we really need to know that indeed the Spirit does give us life. This is based on the reading from Romans 8, verses 6 through 11. So when I was born in the Spirit, or born again, or accepted Christ as my personal Savior, however you want to express the process of entering a new relationship with God, I'm comfortable with all of them, something changed in my body, something changed in my thought life, in my perception of others, in every aspect of who I am. I would almost say that the blinders came off, that whatever it was I was blocking out of my relationships with others and with God was suddenly and miraculously changed. Paul described it this way to the Romans, if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through the spirit that dwells in you. Until I realized that there was a Holy Spirit that empowered the life and ministry of Jesus, and that the same Holy Spirit could empower my life, there was something missing in my life's direction. I was walking through life in the wrong way under my own power. Perhaps I was walking away from God without even recognizing the fact. Perhaps I was even not even thinking about God, who he was or what kind of impact he might have in my life. All of the events of my life that, that led up to the moment of my accepting of God and Jesus Christ were like shots in the dark darts thrown at an unseen target, some hitting the mark and some drifting off into infinite space. Aimless shots leading to nothing in particular or maybe nothing at all. But when I was born of the Spirit and he began directing my life, the target actually came into focus. I was not throwing aimlessly. I had something to shoot at, and it was the kingdom of God that I hadn't seen when I was directing my own life. I came to recognize that God had a plan for me 
and my steps were now being monitored and directed by God himself through the Holy Spirit. The most wonderful things began to happen and to energize my life. All things changed from that moment. I met the most wonderful woman who had been changed herself by the indwelling Holy Spirit. And we embarked on a journey together that is still being guided by that Spirit of God. And every day seems to be more wonderful than the last. The journey has not been without its challenges, though. I am convinced, looking at my life from this side of my heart attacks, that the spirit within had something to do with my survival of those episodes. No less than my wife as a nurse, having a bit of a hint of what was going on that day, and the spirit leading her to lead the doctors. But it was a struggle for me after the initial heart attack to get out of bed even. But my mind told me I had more to do in this life. And I think that was the voice of the spirit within urging me on to God's purpose and strengthening me for the task. My wife, too, has had her own challenges in her body, but remains steadfast in her ministry to her family and the world. One of the ways that she reaches out to the world around us is by feeding some of our neighbors who are challenged in their ability to get their own meals. But what a team God has put together here. The enemy, think the devil and Satan from Revelation 12, 9, has worked hard to take us out. But the Spirit of God has worked tirelessly to thwart all his efforts. Praise you, God. And the Gospel of John gives us insight into the work of the Spirit in the life of Jesus as well as giving us some hope for our own relationship with God. It says in John 5, Indeed, just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whomever he wishes. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. The Spirit is the method and the means by which God works to give life to the dead. And God the Father has given God the Son, Jesus, the discretion to judge all who come to him as to whether they are worthy to receive that power that spirit into their lives. John explains that a little later in his gospel. In the 14th chapter, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Honoring Jesus means accepting that he is the only way that we can have a relationship with God at all. God the Father has given all power to the Son to determine who receives the Spirit to walk with God in this flesh that we inhabit. The stairway to heaven has but one step, and that step is Jesus. If you are not willing to accept the way that God has provided Jesus, then your journey has already been shortened. Rather, your journey has been blocked. If you reject the Son, you have no way to receive the Spirit of life 
into your being. Jesus has the power of God to reject your argument for inclusion in some other way. And you will be forever on the outside looking in. I made the choice for life, and Jesus has been faithful to honor that choice with the indwelling Holy Spirit. I stood on that step, and Jesus embraced me. Praise God. Until we come to understand that the desire of God is salvation, we tend to wander without a destination. There is a mindset that is against the things of God. Paul puts it this way in our passage to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So what does it mean to set the mind on the flesh? It means to strive for the things that the earth can give you money, power, comfort, and the satisfaction of attaining all of that under your own power. But it also means to strive against others to claim things for yourself. It is the reaching for things that you can see rather than the things that you can't see. Paul says here the flesh is death. It is empty. It is temporary. It sows discontent and strife. Malice and jealousy are the driving forces of the mind that is set on the flesh. Granted, you can't see malice and jealousy, but they are dead-end roads that lead to death. And in scripture, death is often used to mean the eternal separation from God. No God forever. No life. No peace. No love. No happiness. Because you can't please God by being a rebel against God. But the mind that is set on the spirit is just the opposite, pleasing God by obedience to the ways God set up for life to be lived leads to the opposite of death. It leads to life and peace, as Paul says. It is an acknowledgment that the source of life is in God who created it. It is the acceptance that living the way God intended for us to live is to live in peace with yourself and with one another. It is to live life without looking over your shoulder and waiting for the other shoe to drop and crush you. It is living as God intends that brings peace and light. It's not having to hide your life because of your sin, but opening it to the light of truth and grace. Now, doesn't that sound like a life that is worth living? Embrace the Lord on that step of faith and the spirit that he gives you. Enjoy life and peace. Amen. And let us pray one more time our congregational prayer for renewal for Lent. O Lord, our great and all-knowing God, you see us as we are. You see our longing to be more like you but also our struggle to overcome the need to direct our own lives. Help us, O Lord, to yield ourselves to your wisdom, 
to live as your forgiven people. Give us the strength to overcome our own temptation to control the direction of our lives. Help us to seek your guidance and submit ourselves to you each day, that we may grow closer to what you have created us to be. In the name of your Son, Jesus, our Christ, we ask. Amen and Amen.